Hi guys, uh, Shreena here from Sassy Seamstress and today I'm doing a tutorial of the top that I'm making for my cross-gender costume of darkness from the movie Legend. Um, I actually already started on it um, because I didn't want to do a tutorial, a 20 minute tutorial of me just cutting the material out, but I will go over the pattern that I ended up using and the different materials I chose for it as well as some of the accessories that I'm integrating into it. So at this point, here we go. All right, so I apologize for the shakiness. I'm actually holding the camera. Um, this is the pattern that I went with. Um, it's actually based off of a vest I already own, um, which is actually a really great way of uh, creating a pattern, if, especially if you're in a bind, um, <laughs> especially if you're poor. <laughs> uh, this is a great way of creating a pattern that you know will already fit you. Um, and so I just used um, pattern material uh, to create what I wanted. I adjusted the, the neckline a few little bits of the pattern, but this is um, essentially what I ended up going with. Okay, so this is the material I used uh, sandwiched in between the lycra and the leather. Um, I opted for this option instead of actually making myself a corset because I wanted um, more movement when I'm when I'm walking around and I didn't really want wires poking into my ribs uh, from the corset so this uh, while it doesn't also give you the super tight fitting that a corset can it does smooth things out and it does suck in a little bit uh, the material is called power net um, and it's it's amazing stuff actually it's very it's a very tight woven um, netting and obviously you can see I have one piece that is a, a skin colored and uh, two pieces that are black. I ended up running out of the black so and I had some extra um, skin tone so I just decided to use that. Um, but this uh, basically follows the same pattern except for the back side. I did not make um, a, like uh, I think it was two separate panels. I combined it into one uh, just to s kind of smooth smooth things out in my my back um, but otherwise this is the material instead of using interfacing I'm using this power net okay so this is the black leather or should be called black pleather that I ended up going with it is a four-way stretch I decided to go with this other than uh, actual leather for two reasons one was cost and the other is I wanted something that would um, would be form fitting without me actually forming it to my body a little bit more forgiving um, but this is the black I'm sorry the back panel um, that I'm pinning and cutting out now uh, make sure you use plenty of bobby pins they are your friends and they'll help make sure that uh, the material and the pattern don't slip and that way you're only having to cut your pattern out once. I have done that a couple times where I didn't use enough pins and the material slipped and whoops, there I go, I'm cutting another whole new piece. So um, also be sure to try and uh, consolidate all of your pieces so that you're not using um, huge chunks of your material. That way you have lots extra just in case, like I said, you do make a mistake. So um, this is that last piece and I'm getting ready to cut it. Okay, so I wanted to take a minute and talk about uh, my sewing machines that I have for this project. I have a Brother uh, sewing machine. It's just your basic, um, very basic sewing machine. And then I have a Baby Lock Serger. Um, you don't need a serger for this project. You can do all of it with just a basic sewing machine. Um, however, I have one, I'm using it, so there you go. <laughs> um, now I have both of them already set up with black uh, thread for this. And I'll tell you now that probably most of your sewing projects will consist of cutting material, pinning the material, and messing around with your sewing machines to try and get them working right. I recommend keeping those scrap pieces of material that you cut uh, to actually run through both of your machines to make sure that you have your settings correct. It's a great way of making sure that you don't end up snagging your material because it's sticking in your feet or at the wrong speed versus the run through. So um, definitely practice with your extra scrap material first before you end up running through your um, actual pattern pieces. So 
to start off with, since I've pinned all of my pieces together, I have them here, um, I'm going to just sew the power mesh to the leather first, and then I'll pin all of the pieces again together and serge them um, with this guy. So uh, we'll start just with the sewing machine. I will do my best to try and get good close-ups of, of it. I'm not going into too much detail on my technique, mostly, well, two reasons. One, it's just not that type of video, and two, um, I'm kind of actually doing a fast and dirty version of my of sewing, so um, I actually am kind of taking out a few um, technique steps because this isn't going for functionality, it's more of just going for a, uh, like a theater look. So anyway, um, we'll get started with uh, sewing all the pieces together. Okay, this is the back panel. I just wanted to take a moment and talk about this. The back panel of the power mesh is one solid piece. There's no seam, whereas the leather piece does have a seam. So um, before I can attach these two together, I had to uh, sew the two panels together, and um, which I'll show you here. I surged them together. Oops, I have a little piece up here that's kind of coming out but anyway so they're searched together and then uh, using just a straight stitch I sewed I secured the uh, seam down a little bit more this will provide it extra strength against the pulling force of the mesh underneath it okay so this is uh, the power mesh and the black leather that I have here already set and pinned and I'm just running along the edge of the pattern. Um, when you start your your thread, you also want to hit the reverse on your um, regular sewing machine. And oop, foot down. And um, this will end up creating a knot so that your thread doesn't come out. And then just continue down. Okay, so now that I've finished sewing all of the pieces individually, I've actually now um, pinned them together. So this is one of the side panels, and I've pinned it um, to the front panel. Um, I know this sounds, maybe this sounds obvious, maybe it doesn't, um, but you want to make sure that both leather pieces are touching each other, um, and that the power mesh is on the inside. Okay, so um, now that all of your sides have been sewn together, um, I think the next logical step would be to uh, serge all of these sides, but that's actually not true. Um, you really, really want to try it on. This is basically, like I said before, basted together, so if you need to make any adjustments, now is the perfect time to do it before you um, serge the seams closed. If you are not surging them, this still applies. Try it on anyway um, and make any adjustments that you need to. Um. Okay, so now that all of my sides have been surged cleanly, um, what I'm going to do is turn it right side in 
and each of these seems similar to uh, the ones that I did earlier where I have this I sewed it again along the seam to seal it um, I'm gonna do that with each of the seams um, and that will give it the extra strength it needs okay so before I actually do this part where I am sewing the seams I just want to make a cautionary note and that is you are dealing with a tube now um, there is no opening so it is really easy to just uh, lose your attention and start sewing on the uh, other side of your shirt um, and I can't tell you how many times I've spent by having to rip out seams and uh, do it all over again so take your time and um, just work through it and just really make sure that what you're sewing is this one side and not also the other side Okay, so now I've finished doing all of the seams. I'll try and get a close-up here. Um, there is the seam. And so now this part is done at this point. Um, I still need to do all of the edging around the top and around um, the, uh, the neckline. Um, I'm also going to do um, with the around the neckline is actually an extra piece of leather that will act as a trim around it. Also, if you're going to do any accent pieces like I'm going to do, um, now is a good time to do that before you sew in the lining. That way um, your inside lining is free of any uh, seam lines or um, any of the embellishment um, sewing lines that you add. Now if you don't care then whatever uh, I would at, at this point then I would add in um, the lining but um, I'm going to the next piece is actually I'm going to add in um, belts that are going to cross um, the midline and will help to kind of even uh, even more so draw in the waist.